Hello, my name is Alex Isles and welcome to Howick on the Northumberland coast in the northeast of England. And in today's episode, we'll be looking at the Mesolithic populations of the British Isles. Now to start off with, you can't talk about the Mesolithic populations without talking about a virtual celebrity um, of this period, and this is Cheddar Man. Now Cheddar Man is a young man in his early 20s who dies in the Mesolithic period or the very early Mesolithic period in a cave down in Cheddar Gorge in the south of England. When he passes away his body is preserved in the cave and we are then able to extract DNA from that body and to learn about the Mesolithic population of the British Isles during that period. But there are complexities to this. And I will say straight away, I am not a geneticist and I have done my reading, but I will put links below to some fantastic resources and people you should go and ask questions to if you want to know more about genetics, because I, that's not my speciality. I am a tour guide and what I do is I learn information and then I do storytelling. I express the information I've learned so that I can inform people, bring places and stories to life and help people to understand our past better. So when Cheddar Man is alive, he is a part of one of two groups of Mesolithic populations that are living in the British Isles in the Mesolithic period. When you have these populations, you have one population coming from the south of France. And in the Paleolithic period, this population group would have been reindeer hunters. They had broad bladed microliths and a microlith is a type of cutting tool that was used by the Stone Age populations throughout the whole of the world. But they had broad bladed ones and they were specialized in hunting reindeer and that transformed to hunting um, deer, cattle, boars, things like that, and what's called an undulate. And they transformed that skill that they previously had with a deer into now being able to hunt other animal groups as well throughout the British Isles. They settle in the south <coughs> and they're mostly on the inland areas. When they're on the inland areas, there's a second group who then comes in just as Dogger Land starts to fill up with water and starts to become salt marsh. And this group is the narrow blade group. And this is another Mesolithic population who start off in Poland or around Eastern Europe, around the Baltic. They come through Denmark across the North, well, what is now the North Sea across Doggerland, and then they enter the British Isles through the East Coast. And we know this because of the fact that we started to discover the places where they land, first of all, due to the discovery of Howick House, just slightly further along the coast, just along here. Now with the discovery of Howick House, this was an occupied settlement around about 7,700 BC and it's occupied by these narrow blade microlith communities. Now the narrow blade microlith communities, they seem to do uh, marine life. They don't form into more t terrestrial hunting. So when they've got marine life, what they are hunting is they're hunting fish, they're hunting um, seabirds, they're eating eggs and they eat a lot of hazelnuts, which seems to be common between both groups of Mesolithic hunter-gatherers. But when they're hunting and they're eating in, around Britain, they also seem to start to adapt, and they also start to eat wild boar as well, which were also discovered within Howick House. Now, this group of narrow-bladed narrow -braided microlith users, they come across into the British Isles, They come across into the British Isles and when they come across into the British Isles they seem to settle between the Northumberland coast, so around about Howick here, and right up to Dunbar in Scotland. So that sort of area there, it's a little sort of crescent in the British coast today. They come across and they settle this region around about 8200, 8300 um, BC and then they start moving around the coast. They come up and around the coast of the British Isles, around to the west coast of Britain, by around about 8,000, um, 8,100 BC. By 7,700 BC, they've also populated Ireland, or at least the north of Ireland, and they've gone into northern Wales and then into south Wales. And then by 7,500 BC, they've gone all the way around the coast again, and they've filled in the gaps on the coastal region. 
Also by 7,500 BC, they've adapted to terrestrial hunting as well. So when they become terrestrial hunters, these guys now have gone into the inland, they've started hunt cattle, boar, and other animals like that as well, and they start populating the British Isles. The interesting thing about this particular group of hunter-gatherers though, is we have no bodies because the hunter-gatherer populations appear to have practiced exhumation, so they have left their bodies in the open air. And when they left their bodies in the open air, animals would eat them, and their bodies just don't last till the modern age. Their bones get decomposed, they turn into soil, and we just don't have any remains to know about their genetic her heritage or legacy today. So because of that, we can't tell people as such to as much depth as we can with Cheddar Man. And even though we have Cheddar Man and we have his population, we have similar uh, populations of Western European hunter-gatherers from Luxembourg and then from other parts of the world as well, we can't infer as much about other populations too. So while we can get a map of what Cheddar Man may have looked like with his darker skin, green or blue eyes and straight hair, there are maybe other genetic groups as well throughout the whole of Europe that because of the fact their bodies haven't been as well preserved, we just don't know about. And so because of that, those populations as well, when the Neolithic farmers come in, the Neolithic farmers do breed in with these new, with the pre-existing Mesolithic populations because in the Neolithic, far Neolithic farmers, we do find a small amount of hunter-gatherer DNA as well. Now, is this the same populations in the British Isles or is this Mesolithic hunter-gatherers who are still across in mainland Europe? We're not entirely sure. We're still trying to figure all of this out and put together a map to understand through genetics, through archaeology and through other research as well, the exact human story in and around this region of the British Isles. But what we can say is that there are two different populations with different technologies, one living on the coastal regions, one living on the inland regions, and both of these groups are co-inhabiting in the British Isles at a similar period from around 8200 BC right the way through to 7700 BC, and these are the Mesolithic populations, one focused on marine life, one focused on terrestrial or woodland life, and then slowly they both adopt a skills so that they can actually live um, in, in, the, in each other's areas as well. We also know that the marine or the narrow blade microlith users would have used river valleys as well. So down the northeast coast or the east coast of Britain, we've got the we've got the Tay, the Tweed, the Alm, the Tyne, the Weir, and the Tees all coming down the east coast of Britain. Now each of these rivers would have provided a fantastic way for the narrow blade users to also go slightly further inland for better hunting, better resources and better lifestyles in and around those regions as well. So they would have been able to go into those regions, get the benefit of the food from that area, maybe do some terrestrial hunting as well of things like boar and stuff like that, but then come back to the coastal region where they would also have shellfish, fish, um, they would have uh, sea lions, other animals like that, and seals, which they could then eat and then get the benefit of that so that they would be able to survive throughout the year, um, no matter what the circumstances were. I really hope you've enjoyed the video today, learning about the Mesolithic populations of Britain, how there were more than one different group in the area, and we've only discovered that by looking at their technology. So maybe future groups and future cultures or ethnicities will come out in the future, and maybe as we discover more bodies or bones or things like that, we'll be able to infer genetics or learn more about these populations. But in the meantime, I really hope you've enjoyed the video, that you've liked and subscribed if you haven't already subscribed, share the video with your friends, please put some questions maybe in the comments section below and I'll try my best to either point you in the direction of some of the learning I've done or to answer your questions where I can and alongside that as well if you've got any other um, sort of interest in this period please do just sort of continue to learn continue to research and find out more yourself if you would like to support me as well I do have a patreon and by supporting the patreon you can also have an influence in the direction the channel will go and suggest content that I shall produce in the future in the meantime though stay safe and well and thank you so much for joining me today Okay.